ones as they are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Barcelona are out. Uh, for more on this, from a Barcelona perspective, let's welcome in Luis Garcia. Uh, but we've got to start with a man who is outside Montjuic because goodness knows how long this shot is going to last. Jules, for the first time in a long time in the Champions League, PSG have something to smile about. That's right, Dan. Never ever before they turned around the tie after losing the first leg and winning in the second leg. They did it tonight. It was an incredible night, really. Of course, the red card is the turnaround. There's no doubt about that. I don't think Arojo needs to make that far, really. But, that, but after that, I mean, still the control to find a spare man every time to create those chances, to concede some chances as well. I mean, with this PhD team, it's never really straightforward, even 11 against 10. But I feel in the end, they deserve that. Just a bit of luck this time after all those remontadas, all those demons from 2017 and then 2019 and all the others. It feels like all those demons have been buried tonight. Ah, look, Jules, his big smug <laughs> face in everybody's face. <laughs> Who've laughed at PSG. Uh, you know, uh, you've, noticed he can't, have you noticed he can't get the shot any closer to his face. <laughs> no, I know, most definitely. Um, Chavi's not happy. <laughs> he said the referee ruined the game. That no, red no. card was never a red card. No, no, no. The, ref the referee did not ruin the game. The referee did not ruin the game. Uh, PSG come out, guns blazing. Bassa were all over the place early on. Obviously, the goal, which... Rafinha has been credited with because it comes off and was against the run of play, as Ali mentioned. But no, this, this, this would look. There are people who will be saying, "Well, there's not enough contact." But when you're running at the pace they're running at and you get ahead of the defender, then it's not your job as the forward to get out of the way. There's contact, practically changes the game. That being said, I, I get the feeling PSG were going to be the better side, whether they would have won or not. I don't know. Uh, I've got to go to you, Luis. Red card. Yes, unfortunately, it is a red card. Oh. Bad decision from uh, Araujo that I think that I wasn't expecting that change of pace of uh, Barcola, but uh, I have to say that, yeah, it's a red card. It's a, it's a fault. The referee decided to call it, and uh, once you call it, you know that uh, you have to uh, send him off. So um, it's a pity because I, I agree with Xavi that this makes a massive change for, the, for this tie, but uh, I don't agree with the referees because I think the referee did a, a good call. In the end, PSG deserving the win? Yeah, and, and, and I must say, before the Barcelona goal, which was an individual play from Lamin Yamal, there hasn't been a whole lot of Barcelona. In fact, there hadn't been anything from Barcelona. Now, they run into a goal, and then beyond that, what you were expecting is, well, Barcelona is just going to continue to defend because they hadn't created, any, created anything offensively. But it has been the story of Barcelona, certainly in the earlier part of the season, that their defensive mistakes are the ones that, in the end, punish them and damage their chances. It damaged and killed their chances in La Liga, and it damaged and killed their chances today in Champions League. And what a chance they had. What a chance they had to go straight to the final because of the opposition in this side of the bracket. You go up one nothing, and you cannot afford to make this mistake if you're Ronald Araujo. But Ronald Araujo has been making this mistake throughout the course of the season. But the game was leaning in that direction anyways because PSG had been significantly better than Barcelona. Why? Why were they significantly better in this game than they were in the first leg, Jules? What changed? Well, I think tactically Luis Enrique this time got it right and he's probably the strongest team that he can put on the field with Barcola and, and Dembele, even Mbappé central. I thought Fabian Ruiz had a really good game. Zaire Emery, we've talked about him a lot, and Vitinha was outstanding, I thought. And defensively, Marquinhos and Lucas Hernandez, Marquinhos especially, was really strong against Lewandowski, which was not the case a week ago. I, I think that's the first thing. The second thing, and again, I think the credit goes to Luis Enrique in the sense that from straight after the first leg, in the dressing room, we said to the players, don't worry, we will do it over there next week. We will qualify, we will make history because for the first time we will be able to turn the tie around. And I think through the whole week, he kind of transmitted the, the calmness, the confidence, the positivity when, when really you were down after losing that first leg 3-2 at the Paris de Prince. And I think he deserves a lot of credit tactically, but also mentally the way he prepared these players. It seems news of Barcelona and Xavi's resurrection is a little bit... Well, yes, bit, obviously, the talk about it going into A this, little was, bit yeah, early. Joanne Laporte saying, look, we're going to have a conversation, see what's going to happen, but I think... Well, that's, but that's just him, isn't it, running his mouth again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not saying it now. <laughs> well, exactly. Now he's put the old wanted ad back well, in we, the we, paper. Actually, Luis and I uh, talked about this at the weekend, that, that, you know, Xavi's made his decision. You know, this is how it would be folly to go back, because, if they, you know... Two months into the season, results maybe are not great again, and you're, you're revisiting 
Uh, the same scenario, so I, I don't think it was ever, as we discussed at the weekend, ever really in doubt that, that Barcelona need to go in a different direction and he's, he, he needs to do his own thing. Maybe away from Barcelona, take a break and that'll be better for him. But, but you know, from PSG, the PSG perspective, you know, if you'd have said, you know, we're going to talk about Dortmund and their game, but if you'd have said PSG and Dortmund are in the semi-finals at the start of the season, I don't think there's many of us would have sat here and went, yeah, I can see that mm. happening. Well, certainly not a couple of months in this season. Uh, but from PSG's perspective, you can only do what you do to get there. But the real test is, is going to be ahead for them when they, when they meet uh, one of the real big boys, whoever it is, isn't it? Because, I mean, this, this Barcelona side has been better recently, but that was from a standard where they were losing shipping goals even at this Montjuic Stadium, left, right and centre, to some of the weaker teams in, in La Liga. And they managed to stifle that a little bit but not, not in this case here when they come up against uh, a better side. What's interesting, Jules, when we were talking about this tie looking ahead when the draw was made, everything was about Kylian Mbappe. And despite the fact he got two goals today, this victory hasn't been about Mbappe, has it? No, not really, although, of course, the penalty, and I think, trust me, in the stadium, you need a lot of composure to score that penalty. And he scored many before, including in the World Cup final, but still... It was a key moment. The, his second goal is at the end, a counter-attack. But what I love the most maybe about the last goal is that it's him in the box, tackling the ball ahead of Fermin. I think he was on the Gunnohan cross to then start the counter-attack. And then he's at the beginning there. He was quite calm through the whole week. And the people around him were saying, don't worry, he will, he will be there. He will, he will deliver in a way. And he did, he did deliver with the two goals. Overall, apart from that, I don't think there was still enough from him. Kubasi and, and then... Inigo Martinez did OK. I just think he was there just when the team needed him the most. Uh, Luis, what disappointed you the most from Barcelona today? <clears throat> no, actually, I wasn't disappointed with Barcelona. I mean, the result is not the best one. And, uh, of course, not going to the semi-final is a big and frustrating disappointment. But uh, I think Barcelona did what they have to do. I mean, uh, Barcelona was not dominated. It was Paris Saint-Germain, the one who was dominated, but was creating chances, was waiting to try to get uh, Paris Saint-Germain out, uh, out of guard, uh, using the wide areas with Rafinha making diagonals into the middle, with uh, Lewandowski trying to provide what he provided in the first leg. Lamin Jamal made a fantastic chance, but after 31 minutes with that uh, uh, send-off, with that red card, everything changed, and then you play. And actually, I'm going to tell you something. I, I liked it more uh, Barcelona in the second half. They were playing with uh, 10 men. They, they were trying, they were more proactive. They were pressing a little bit higher on the field to try because they was needed that goal to, to get the equalizer. I liked it, that Barcelona mode, that the, the, the one that I, I saw in the first 45. But uh, in the end, I think it, it was a pity that we couldn't see a 11 v 11 situation the whole game. I think it was very close. I totally agree with the guys that Paris Saint-Germain was a little bit more confident on the way that they were playing. And Barcelona was waiting to, to, to be open up and, and see if uh, on a contest that they could uh, hurt uh, Paris Saint-Germain. But in the end, I think the Barcelona did uh, a good game after all. Can I just tell you that the red card, while it's obvious that, OK, you're playing a man down and it's Ronald Araujo that you're missing out on and you have to make a substitution, was it right to be well, Lamine Yamal? Well, and that and that's, that's what I was about to say, that you're also losing Lamine Yamal, who, in my estimation, is their best player in the attack, their most dangerous player. And if you're going to go on the counter, I prefer having Lamine Yamal on the ball than Rafinha. I prefer ha having Robert Lewandowski. I prefer having Lamine Yamal instead of Robert Lewandowski on the counter. Now, obviously, Lewandowski is not coming out because he may somehow run into a goal and it's something that you needed to have on the field. But when it comes down to it, who's your most dangerous player in a counter-attack opportunity? I still think it's Lamin Yamal. Now, it becomes an easy choice for a manager to say, well, I'm going to take the teenager out. Right. In this moment, in this stage, playing a man down, of course we're going to need the work rate of Rafinha. But how are you going to create an opportunity if indeed you need to do so? How are you going to create a chance? Who gives you the best chance to do that on the counterattack in a moment of transition? You look at Barcelona's personnel, Lamin Yamal is that guy. He's been that guy for you the whole season. So to take him off, now you're essentially renouncing to any possibility of getting out on the counter or getting out in transition. And eventually, when you needed to score a goal, you didn't have an option to go in those moment of transitions. You didn't have an option to go on the counter. You didn't have an outlet. You didn't have a player that can actually beat somebody in a 1v1 situation as he did for the goal. Look, it, it, it seems like it's revisionist history here, but 
I was saying as he was happening, I don't know that I'd take Lamin Yamal because he is my best attacking player. I think if it'd been an if Lovin if Lewandowski mm. had been unavailable and had been, you know, one of the younger players playing through the middle, I think they would have been probably the scapegoat right. for the red card. But it's Lewandowski, and I'm not saying that's right. I'm saying you've got to think, as the manager is thinking, he might get me a goal. He was pretty good in the first leg. You know, he's hold up play and he's passing and all that sort of stuff. But then you're taking off a guy, you've got two wide players, one who was banging the goals in both games in Rafinha, mm. and the other one who just roasted the fullback for your opening goal, for Rafinha's goal in this game. And also, when you go down to 10 men, what happens when you get in the second half? You get tired. OK, and then you can make substitutes. Of course you can, but the youngsters, particularly in the wider areas, can work harder. They can work longer and they can work harder. And in hindsight, stopping the fullbacks getting forward with the two wider players and letting the centre halves have it might have been a better option for him. But again, we're talking about he's going to have to take Lewandowski off and not one of the younger players. And for any manager, that's a big decision. To try to play from the wide areas into diagonals, beating players on, on, on speed. But with Luis Enrique, he has found a different position for Dembele. If you see, he's more often into the box. In the first leg, he was uh, right there into the box to get the, the, the first goal. And in this occasion, exactly the same. And he's even been playing as a second striker. That's a totally different Ousmane Dembele that we had, the one that we had in Barcelona. So Luis Enrique kind of gave it another opportunity in a different position, closer to the box, closer to where he is more... Uh, dangerous on because he, he can go to one side or the other side with the right or, or with the la, uh, with the right or with the left, and because his ability to arrive in in those kind of positions. So I think that I was impressed because of that, not because of his game, because again he wasn't the best game today. But uh, another goal and another goal against Barcelona. So yeah, not the best night for Barcelona and but he should, the history with Dembélé. But he shouldn't even be scoring that goal. Mm. You watch that clip. Who's sleeping at the back post again? Cancelo, mm -hmm. right? He's not Cancelo. even, yeah. He's not even looking. You got you got Dembele behind you, and he's facing the ball, mm -hmm. defending scenarios like back posts and wide players and positioning. They're two of the worst. And I'm not bringing Alexander Arnold in for any reason because Liverpool are not playing. But they're two guys that are super talented going forward, mm. but they're a headache at the back. And I think I talked about it in the first leg. PSG missed a trick by not targeting him. He made two mis at least two mistakes tonight. The challenge for the penalty was ridiculous. He was never going to uh, win the ball. Uh, Dembele was going away from goal. Didn't have to make it. And then it's a very, very small thing at the back post. But if he's in the right position and his head's on swivel, he probably knocks it out for a corner. He's none of those things, and they get a goal. And part of defending in this sort of moments is anticipating the potential mistake that could happen at the near post. If you're a defender and you have defensive instincts, what do you do? Say, look, I got to put myself in a position in which if that ball goes through the near post and now goes onto the far post, I can clear it. What you see from him is the slow jog initially, the lack of awareness, lack of anticipation or, or instinct to read the situation and say, you know what, if I take not one, just, just a couple of steps. Just a couple of steps and put myself in a position in which I now I can attack the ball instead of having to react once the cross has gone by. That lack of anticipation allows them better to go and score. And let me just give a shout out to Bradley Barcola as well. A, a, a guy who, look, coming into the season, he would not have been, I don't think would have been in the plans of Luis Enrique. You, you think of Colomuani, you think of Mbappe, Ousmane Dembele, how are those three going to play together? This guy came at halftime and changed the game in the first leg. Today, from the start, every time he touched the ball, he's going at defenders. And what do you want from a, from a wide player if you're a manager, if you're Luis Enrique? Yeah, you want that level of aggression, 1v1 situation, I'm taking at defenders, I'm creating problems, sometimes making the wrong decision, but at the very least, you see a guy that is going to create problems in those 1v1 matchups, and he did that today over and over again. Uh, how tired is your arm, Jules? You all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's oh! Oh, that, that tire! That tire! Oh, he go. Actually, good. I think he just. I, I, fair enough. Look, you're standing yeah. outside Barcelona like oh, that. No, I'm no. Two no. Here and you bang on. No, that's <laughs> dereliction of duty. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, coming from no, you, I'm Bernie. sorry. Get him back. Uh,